Well, of course, as we work through the long holiday weekend, everyone is watching the weather. How much rain did we see over the weekend? Where did we see it? What is the outlook for the week ahead? Very, very critical uh, time frame right now. And we keep our eyes on the weather forecast. Joining us now for the latest, Eric Snodgrass of Nutrien Ag Solutions with us. And Eric, great to catch up with you once again. And, um, you know, I think just to start, first things first, where did we see some rains over the weekend? Was it enough or we still got big pockets that are missing out on, on rainfall right now, Eric? Yeah, the heaviest rains kind of stretch from Colorado through the Southern Plains all the way into the Southeast, uh, where over the last week we added 2,400 reports of severe weather as well. So those rains weren't just rain. It was rain and hail and tornadoes and straight line wind damage. The crop in that whole stretch there, there's a lot of it that got torn up by severe weather. And you go just north of that, we did have a system this weekend that tried to pull into parts of Iowa, Missouri, Illinois. It's going to sit over Kentucky and, 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 and Tennessee this next probably four or five days. But it uh, brought a little bit of light rain into parts of uh, central and western Illinois. Those are places that hadn't measured rainfall in almost six weeks. And it brought some rain into Iowa. And central Iowa got, got a good drink out of this. But, um, you know, you ask, was it enough? And given the deficits up to this point, um, you're going to have some pockets that are going to take this and run with it, but there's still a large part of, of, uh, you know, of Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota, you know, that stretch and Michigan, don't forget Michigan, uh, that's, uh, that's missed out on the rain. So we are at this point now where we don't just need rain. We actually need, we need, we need like two systems a week that each have the ability to put down about an inch of rain. And we actually need, it's kind of funny. We need to bring some heat into the system when this all happens. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we need to have um, a much better go of it going forward here with this pattern. So, yeah, what a strange. I mean, you go from Colorado, which has had just had its wettest, like six week time period on record parts of eastern Colorado. Remember, they were in deep drought a year ago to straight from there to like Michigan. And what you do is from the wettest to the driest. And um, we're setting up things this week that that midsection of the a corn belt, their primary corn and soybean belt is in what I call a saddle point. It's kind of sitting there with the upper level flow being weak. The big ridge in Texas, deep trough out West, nothing comes in the midsection of the country until maybe next weekend. I was going to say, you know, what's that outlook for rain here in the week ahead? And you mentioned maybe getting some more heat in here. Well, with that Texas Ridge, I know some areas of the uh, Corn Belt are going to see, you know, low 90s here to start off the week. So maybe getting a little bit of that heat, which we haven't had a whole lot of heat stress. That's maybe been one you know, helpful factor here with little rainfall is that we haven't had some of that heat stress, Eric. Yeah, but now all of a sudden I care about low 90s. You know, typically in late June, I bring it up to 95 and a lot of the corn crop is just perfectly fine when you got the soil moisture. But now we're looking at low 90s plus just a major deficit in soil moisture. And then you've got you got stress on this crop. And so we are, um, you know, we're, we're going to see a few days of that. But the eastern corn belt, no. I mean, you're going to have cloud cover. Uh, you're going to have rain. You're, I mean, my goodness, uh, North Carolina, they do go corn in North Carolina. Don't forget that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a really quite important state for agriculture. Uh, I know we often focus on the Midwest for what we talk about, but man, we might see from Raleigh all the way to the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, 10 inches of rain in the next uh, few days. And that's not from a tropical system. That's just from this cutoff low. But uh, yeah, we're going to see some high temperatures uh, getting up there in the low 90s. And that's going to put some stress because we don't have much moisture in there to evaporate. We don't have, um, you know, we don't have the, the great condition with moisture in the plant. So we're going to watch that corn roll up, get real defensive with temperatures in the 90s. So, yeah. And I've got just a full confession here, Jesse. I've got backyarditis because I'm in a spot that has not gotten any of this moisture. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when, when I, my, my closest thing I look at is when I drive around and see these fields, and see that I'm in Champaign County and we've got real heavy soil and we typically make, make big bushels here. And now we are, um, you know, we're, we're stressed. So it's, uh, it's important when you're sitting in the middle of it. Well, I mean, I know the, you know, we've had these rains in the forecast, they don't verify or they keep getting pushed back. And it feels like Eric, we're entering a, a pretty critical time frame for this growing you know, especially corn crop. Soybeans have a little more time, but especially this growing corn crop. What's your thoughts as we kind of enter some of that pollination time frame, some of these very key times? Like, are, is that a is that a going to be a major concern? Do you think for folks here this next week or so? Um, 
the farther south you go, the bigger the issue is going to be with respect to, to pollination right away. But I'll, I'll talk about two things. You mentioned soybeans for a second. Uh, where I am, the, the canopy is not filled in. The beans are pretty short. And, um, and, and again, we tend to worry about beans later, you know, in the year with respect to moisture, but the solstice is coming up in a couple of days. And so we typically like to think about flowering, we like to think about having a lot of leaf area in order to take in that, those long days, you know, it's a very a photosensitive crop, but, um, you know, given some of the deficits, we have to consider that as well. In terms of pollination, remember a lot of people, especially my home state of Illinois, rapidly planted in that warm 10 days after Easter. And then the rest of April into early May was quite cold. So a lot of the crops sat in the ground, didn't jump right out. So we did a, you know, some calculations based off GDDs. And you know we're thinking that most of the pollination in the primary corn and soybean belt is going to happen between um, you know, the, the second, third, and fourth week of July, probably peaking around July 20th, if I had to put a date mm -hmm. there. Um, so what happens between now and then is critical. And you mentioned a few moments ago, the Texas Ridge, the Texas Ridge is at least something new. Texas has been cold up until just recently. And that Ridge can move over to Mexico. We can get rid of this high that keeps going into Canada. We start to get Ridge riding storms here. Problem is, is that the best way to get a good Ridge rider is to actually have the Bermuda high in place. It's not there. So what I say here is that there is going to be risk going into pollination until these pieces all start to work their ways to, together. The good news is, is that normally we don't see patterns lasting longer than about six weeks in the Midwest. So we, we tend to get change after about six weeks. So I'm hoping mm -hmm. we're on the backside of all of this. There's evidence of change, but we need we need real change. We need, I need confidence in the change. Well, I know something you mentioned to me before we went on the air is some new CPC data mm -hmm. that you're looking at. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what you've seen there? Yeah. So CPC is the Climate Prediction Center. They are the government's arm of doing this kind of forecasting. A lot of us like to look at their maps. Many, many farmers would be very familiar if I showed you one of their maps. Uh, the thing about the CPC is they um, were probably the first to get the drought that develops in May right. Uh, some of the other models didn't pick up on that. You know, we we relied heavily on the CPC's forecast as guidance for what we were thinking as individual meteorologists. You look at their July outlook and they've got, I mean, they got equal chances in the primary corn and wet in the Western Corn Belt. They do not keep the bullseye of dry over the Great Lakes states, which suggests that we could get into a good stormy pattern in the month of July. And I want nothing more than that. But um, the reality of it is, is we're coming off of a three day weekend and that's not yet there in the cards. So they're going to see a forecast when the market's open tonight that continues to show drought stress in places that um, have been very, very dry. And the places that have been wet have um, still got more wet coming. So um, it's going to be a, a challenging forecast for the next probably 20 days. And at that point, I mean, we'll actually, I think, be able to make a call on it sooner. But we will know in the next 20 days what this whole thing is going to look like in terms of the ability for us to produce a big crop. Beans will be a little bit later than that. But it's, uh, it's a bit uh, stressful, you know, watching yeah. this evolve like this. Definitely very stressful and, of course, uh, something that we're going to watch closely and see how this weather pattern develops here. Very critical time frame. Eric, I know as well folks can uh, sign up for your weekly newsletter out on Mondays, and then you guys have a, a great new uh, app tool uh, that folks can use uh, as well through Nutrien to uh, keep track of what's going on with the weather, can't you? Yeah, and, and I, I post that as a link in those Monday reports, and uh, I'm working on a Monday report right now. We're going to release it later in the day. We normally release it in the morning, but I'm going to put it out there this afternoon when I got the 12Z model runs in so that uh, we can get a good look at uh, what's going to happen with this. You know, if, if, if weather's going to be traded, we want to see what it's going to look like uh, right before the market's open. And um, I, I don't trade it, but I, I want to provide the info. So that's what we're going to do. Well, we appreciate the info and the time and insight as always here on the show with that Eric Snodgrass of Nutrient. Thanks for joining us, and we will talk to you next week. Sounds good. See you then.